So this is 253 weeks now. Does that sound right? It's crazy. Yeah. 253 weeks of us doing this shit straight. You're saying crazy things now. Yeah. And by straight, I don't mean like sexual preference. I mean, no, just streak. No, I mean, like streak of we're going through Trump, World War Three, <laughs> pandemics. Fucking Trump, <laughs> fucking cops killing people, fucking racism, <laughs> fucking everything, and, and we're still doing it. <laughs> I can't believe that this is the world that we've come to, considering how negative and pissy I was at the start of this show 253 weeks ago. Yeah. And I'm just as negative and pissy about it as just the rest of the world is now <laughs> at my fucking level. We all level. just joined you. Well, let, let's face it. Uh, America's uh, been writing checks, and uh, now, uh, you know, people want them cashed. Speaking of things that need to get paid off, let's do Savage Beach now. <laughs> all right. Here we go. The following show will destroy your self-worth with excessive expletives, overtly descriptive sexual deviance, and more desperation for external validation than any so-called entertainment should ever be allowed. Two talentless losers who are about as insightful and provocative as a comatose jellyfish. Cinema Psyops. A tendency to deprave and corrupt those whose minds are open to such immoral influences and to whose hands a publication of this sort may fall. So if someone of a dirty bird gets hold of your stuff and it makes them a dirtier bird, then it's labeled obscene. Encouraging the lowest, most base, and animalistic of desires to all who will listen. Because we, as a society, have decided that a cinema psyops represents our base and vulgar impulses, and that acknowledging our use of it rattles our collective conscience. I was trying my best to make a positive impact in the lives of others, but secretly I was involved in a relationship that was taking over my life. Cinema Psyops. It was leaving me wounded and depressed, unable to even manage the relationships that mattered to me. Auditory vermin infest in every aspect of the human condition, spreading their filth and foul disease. The Black Plague Podcast. Cinema Psyops with Court and Matt. the 253rd straight week of brand new recorded content of Cinema PsyOps. I'm your host, Court, sitting all alone in the studio, hoping that I'm not blowing out everybody's eardrums because I've boosted levels like a motherfucker. Speaking of boosted and levels and being a motherfucker, it's Matt. Oh man, I'm fucking old. <laughs> Wait, you're fucking old, or, or... No, no, I'm just old. You, uh, uh, I, uh, okay, so you're not I, fucking because you're old. I've made a conscious decision. I'm going to start working on my health, and I have been watching what I eat, and I've been going out and walking slash jogging, running every day. Is anybody chasing and, you? Because that's the only way I've ever seen you try to run is when someone's no, after you. No, I'm just doing it on my own. Mm. I make believe someone's chasing me. Ah, so uh, okay. So someone's after you. Like uh, you're, you got like a Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees situation behind you, and you just got to keep going. Yeah, yeah and uh, but uh, on uh, Sunday. I tad overdid it, and then I sat down, and then um, I was getting up to uh, uh, head out for the day, and uh, my lower back just tightened up, and it's still fucked up, to the point where I'm now just heating padding it, and it's like so bad it makes you feel sick. So I'm I'm having a great time over here, and that's when I realized I'm fucking old. I can't. <laughs> it's like, fuck. Well, I've taken my hermit lifestyle just a little too serious myself. Yeah. Um, 
I did not drive my car for, let's just say, long enough, and it appears that my rear brakes, that the emergency brakes and the parking brake kind of thing, uh, yeah. they have rusted together, and my battery died, and I noticed my battery died because I was going to start it just to take it for a run because I was worried I left it sitting too long, and I yeah. needed to drive it. Well, it turns out I left it sitting way too long because after I got the battery recharged and went to take it for a spin, now the back tires are all seized up. I think the brakes rusted over, <laughs> and now I'm going to have to take it to somebody to fix all the shit that I let go to pot by letting my car sit as I am a hermit and didn't want to go anywhere. Yeah, I've got a figure in my head where if it's going to cost X amount of money, I think I'm just going to drop it and then use that X amount of money to do a car lease if and when I need a car in the future. Yeah. Um, it's time to get a new car again. Yeah, well, I mean, I've had mine for a really fucking long time. It's been it's 13 ish plus years old. And I was yeah. at the point where I'm like, I'm not buying a brand new car ever again. And I may not even buy a car ever again, you know, because the, the amount of money that you throw at paying for a car, by the time you get it paid off, it's depreciated in value so much. It's really not worth it. Yeah, I know in people's heads, they're automatically going, wait, wait, no, that's not true because you can buy a car and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, the minute you drive it off the lot, it depreciates in value extremely. So every financial like advisor that is worth their salt will tell you that leasing is better if you actually have the credit to be able to pull it off. Yeah, yeah. I uh, almost leased when we got a new car, but uh, then I got a pretty good offer on the car we got now. So I just say just to go with that. Right. And, you know, this car that I've got, it was 13 years ago and hastily in my youth, I was like, I want to drive a brand new car off the lot. I wanted to do that at least once in my life. It yeah. made me feel like an adult. And now it just turns out that I bought a fucking lemon piece of shit kind and of car. <laughs> I'm always very happy that I never bought new. Like even the car I have now was at least a, it was a year old when I got it. It was a used car. Um, It was maybe one of the newer, like newest to me I've ever gotten. Uh, But you and uh, a few other friends who all have at one point in their youth just went ahead and bought a brand new car and uh, things, you know, they always hated it that they did that later on. So <laughs> it took me probably 10 years before I regretted buying it brand new. And it's it seems about the right level. Yeah, That's when like a lot of my friends say that's when a lot of other people have all been like as well. It's always like 10 years in. You're like, why did I fucking do this? Well, and you, if you're going to do a car that's got like initial quality. You know, if they're rated really high for initial quality, that means that at a certain amount of time, they just fall apart. And it yeah. seems like they head for about 10 years for that to get the initial quality, maybe less, depending. I think they've even probably lowered it. And I'm at the point now where it's like, I mean, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to work from home. I want to basically have a vehicle when and if I need one. So maybe I'll rent a car or something like that. And, you know, maybe the wife and I could share one because she's the one that's always on the fucking go. And I always want an excuse to never go anywhere anywhere. Yeah. So maybe yeah, that's yeah. the solution. I don't know. I just, I just, I, like I said, the number that I have in my head is probably significantly lower than what most people would pay to get their car fixed before, yeah, right? before I'm like, can I just not necessarily junk it, but like, can, you know, can somebody take this into trade in and set me up with a lease on the trade in amount that I got? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, but I, you know, I, I'm, I'm saying that now, but I'm probably blustering. I know that's probably not going to be the case. And on top of that, when I was editing last week, I noticed this really weird high pitched squealy noise that was in the recording that I did my best to eliminate. And I used noise reduction on and all of that kind of stuff. But there's still a couple spots where I noticed that it, it kind of snuck through on me. And I was trying to figure out what that was. And I think I, I had a feedback loop created for this fucking Skype channel that was bleeding on into my channel because it was going through the grounds. Um, so <laughs> I think. Oh, I, Nice. Yeah, I had to rewire some things real quick after I got, you know, troubleshot my car. And, you know, basically I had enough time to where I messaged you like 45 minutes before we're supposed to be the two in the show. And I'm like, you think you're going to be ready to go early? And you were like, yeah, I'm like, OK, I'm going to wolf down some food now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it lucked out. It worked out. We're, we're still recording early and the gear's working so far, it seems I like. And I would have been ready earlier, but then I had to go take a massive shit. So you know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so I had some problems with my gear I had to fix. I had some problems with my car that it looks like I'm going to have to take it to a shop because I'm not popping all the drums off in my fucking driveway in this heat. I'll let some poor bastard that's getting paid less for the shop to make tons of money hourly on his labor to do it for me. 
exactly if it's worth <laughs> doing i i have a feeling that it's going to be because the front tires still roll just fine i just had it sitting too long in park and i think that the the brakes just rusted over they might even be able to break them free and not even have to replace them but you know that depends upon the shop you take it it's not a big deal good times of being an adult <laughs> yeah that's uh the thing that my wife was saying too she's like haha you have to adult now and i'm like you're not a fucking millennial stop using that fucking phrase yeah, yeah, right. Fuck Jesus. Let them have their shit. So I guess the pandemic's over because Trump doesn't want anybody to be tested anymore and everybody's going to fucking bars with their fucking masks off and even in this fucking state. I think the psyche of the country is fuck it. I think a lot of people have gone fuck it. I understand in the Black Lives Matter movement that's happening now and the protests that are happening now, there is a purpose for that because disproportionately exactly. black people are dying anyway because of coronavirus because of the neighborhoods I, and the, the yeah. places that they are basically I'm stuck just saying at. it's going to lead to an explosion of cases. I'm not saying they shouldn't be doing it. I'm just saying the reality is we're going to get an explosion of cases. Yes, that is absolutely possible. And you know where... By the, the t- by the tens of thousands. Yes. It's possible. Yes. But we also uh, got an explosion of cases just from fuckheads being assholes on Labor Day weekend and going to lakes and getting on top of each other and being all very, crazy. Very not wrong there either. I'm not I'm, yeah, I'm not blaming one particular set of people or the other. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just saying I think with Most... everything that's happened in this year so far, I believe Americans have gone to fuck it mode. I don't know what it's going to take for make people to care again, uh, but <laughs> shit, I, I, fuck, I'm scared. I almost don't want to know. Well, you know, the virus is being weaponized basically in all sorts of factions with the protests. The police are using tear gas and other things on people that are doing damages to respiratory tracts and not allowing people to just peacefully protest. The bulk of the protesters I have seen that have been on the side of the Black Lives Matter movement are all wearing masks. They're keeping distance as best they can. And still doing yeah, the protest. Best they can, except for a lot of these protests, which, by the way, there was a great one over the weekend uh, for Black Trans Lives Matter. Uh, it, was, it was a great rally. It, it, a lot of people were there, and it was excellent to see that because that is a very important thing uh, and a very important group of people who have been marginalized and abused. Well, it's a minority uh, within a minority, even. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, But the only scary thing about it, unfortunately, is that, I mean, there were a lot of people and you should have seen the aerial picture of it and there was just no way that was social distancing and even with masks i'm just like if just one of those people is sick that that's about five thousand people are going to be sick it's just but at the same time we are in a very desperate point in time for for these groups that are being systematically destroyed by society so i mean fuck I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, I just don't fucking know. Yeah, it's a grim, dark situation that we find ourselves in, and we seem to t- be talking about it more and more every week than what we really should. Need to get you onto the Psychosomatic podcast with Darren. Darren needs to yeah. just fucking call you up or, or message you and try and get that scheduled. <laughs> Do you have yeah. do you have Messenger on your phone for the Facebook thing? Because that's usually how he yeah. gets a hold of people. Uh-huh, uh huh. I do. All right. Well, because I think he may have messaged you before in the past, so you might want to double check to see. Cause, I'll check it. Because you you are ripe to just want to bitch and moan about everything that's happening in society, and I'm trying to make this podcast as much of an escapist reality as I can. You know, but yeah. Hey, but, I mean, real I, life I, shit hits us. We got to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, especially with this kind of real life shit. This is a, a monumentous time in this country. Uh, you know, this shit hasn't been seen ever like in at this level so i believe it's been seen in 1918 but they were trying to do something about it but didn't have the technology in this case no one gave a fuck enough to do something about it in the administration and government and dismantled everything because they didn't see a purpose for all of that health care yeah. <laughs> to try and take yeah, care right. of people because they want poor people to die so that they can make just a little bit more off of taxes and buy an even bigger yacht Ugh, fucking people are gross. Yeah. All right, let's get, let's have fun. Let's shake this off. I'm getting a little, I'm starting to get in a fucking mood and I'm going to, it isn't going to be good. Well, we have both Taryn and Donna back this week in Savage Beach. Taryn and Donna are back. You know, everyone says these movies about the Abilene's. I don't think it is. Well, there's an Abilene in every single movie we've watched so far. 
Yeah, but so Donna and Taryn are always around, too. I don't know if Donna and Taryn are always around, but I've seen, like, Donna Spear shows up in later films, so I don't know. The thing I'm waiting for is, and we're getting real fucking close to it, I think it's like the first seven films do not feature Julie Strain, but I think she's in the last five. I can't remember exactly when she comes in. I think it's Fit to Kill, but that's what I am the most excited for because um, anybody who knows me well enough probably knows I'm a Julie Strain fanatic, so yeah, (laughs) I've loved just about everything that she's in. And if she's in there, it means it's going to be fun because she is super fun and has so much like corny wink at the camera kind of charisma that she's got going on in everything she stars in. Is it's like going to break the fourth wall. I th- she doesn't necessarily break the fourth wall in everything. But like if sh- there's going to be a character that's a fourth wall breaker, that's going to look at you and be like, I know you're staring at my tits. That's Julie Strain. That's always Julie oh. Strain. You know what I mean? Right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It seems like her characters are always self-aware, you know, like Grant Morrison wrote her characters or something. <laughs> Yeah, I got you. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm I'm waiting for that. I'm looking for that. I'm really excited for that. I did manage to grab a theme from the movie that we will be playing at sort of like the very end of the show. And then the rest of it is going to be just kind of tropical themed style royalty free music. All right, fine. But everyone just be fucking cool. All right. Yeah. <laughs> when the time comes. <laughs> yeah, just be fucking cool. <laughs> hey, if I can find it on YouTube and it hasn't been taken down, that means it can at least get up on YouTube and their scrubbers aren't finding it. Yeah, right. (laughs) All right. Well, speaking of scrubbers of YouTube, we're going to take a little break here. We're going to play the Legion GoFundMe promo, which is doing a lot of good in this world. We actually dispersed another fund payment out to the LGBT community. I can shorten it to that, right? That's okay. Uh, LGBTQ plus is LGBTQ plus. plus. Okay, there we go. Yeah. LGBTQ plus community. There's actually like a group of lawyers that um, were getting funding for fighting for the rights, especially since there were some things that the administration tried to roll back, and we dispersed some funds out from the Legion GoFundMe for that. And uh, so we're running low on some of the funds that we've gotten, and if we're going to be helping our fellow man out, got to get some folks in on that. So that's why I'm going to keep hitting this promo. <laughs> <laughs> we come back we'll have a little bit of music that's tropical themed that'll fit in with the uh, savage beach and then we'll have the trailer this is Bo from legionpodcasts.com hey it's been a crazy time and when the world gets nuts we're happy to offer some old-fashioned podcast entertainment but for some folks getting a laugh out of a show isn't really helping these days people who depend on tips in their bartending jobs or have been put on furlough with no pay till the worst of this coronavirus threat has passed that's a tough spot That's why we set up a GoFundMe for members of our community, a sort of grand scale, take a penny, leave a penny. For people like myself, for whom the recent disruptions haven't kicked us out of work, well, we can drop a few of those extra pennies in the GoFundMe jar. For those who are directly affected by recent events and find themselves looking for money to pay the electric bill or keep the water on, well, how about you give me a shout at bo, B-O, at legionpodcasts.com. Let me know the situation and what you need, and we'll do our best to make life a little easier. And you can find links to the GoFundMe on the front page of legionpodcasts.com, on our Facebook group page, or on Twitter at Legion Podcasts, where it's the pinned tweet. For those of you who are able, thanks in advance for chipping in. And members of our community who need a hand, hey, here we are. Remember, stay safe, stay healthy. And we're all going to get through this together. Legion isn't just a name. It's who we are. Thanks for listening to all the shows here on Legion Podcasts. And we'll talk to you soon.
that's dropping on us, that, that little bit of a beat. So it's a good time to come in here and interrupt it because it might get a little too much like dubstep like last week's uh, Royalty Yeah, Priest right. Oh, my God. <laughs> that shit rocked my fucking butthole. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> last week's music because that was actually yeah. relatively refreshing. It's like that. Yeah, that was a, what we just had was nice. It reminds me of um, uh, a little bit of uh, Day of the Dead when it first starts and get a lot of that Caribbean flair into there. Yeah, that Howard Shore score sure does resemble what we were just talking about there with this music as well. But, you know, it's not going to contain that Howard Shore sounding Caribbean music. What's that? This trailer. This is Savage Beach. In hard ticket to Hawaii, undercover federal agents Donna Hamilton and Taryn Kendall save the country from drug smugglers. In Picasso Trigger, they save the world from the brutal hand of an international assassin. In Savage Beach, they are the targets for murder. This time, they'd better save themselves. Good idea. Donna and Taryn crash land into the center of a search for a ton of gold. Where there's gold, there's greed, and murder rules the land. A paradise haunted by a mysterious presence. Take cover. This is no ordinary day in the sun. Terror reigns on the shores of Savage Beach. Okay, there you go. Terror reigns on the shores of Savage Beach. It always does. I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> We all got problems. All right, well, Savage Beach, yeah. So we start out with some sword play. Um, they, uh, you know, they, the, the two people are fighting with swords. Uh, or, training or practicing training with swords. Training, yeah. And uh, then we see Donna and Tara, and they're riding around. They're they're having just a good old time, living their life. Uh. And when we see uh, two different ladies, they're riding mopeds. Mopeds. You don't see them a lot anymore. Actually, you see them a lot more than you think. Really? Oh, I yeah. haven't. I yeah. guess me. I haven't gotten to see them a lot lately. Maybe it's but, just uh, your your neighborhood. I've I've I, maybe. let me take that back. I've seen a lot more scooters and um, like those electronic powered scooter type things, or like a you know not necessarily just a scooter, but like you know the the push style scooters that are electrified, and then the actual you know gas powered scooters or whatever that you would see like in Europe and shit. Oh yeah, I see a lot more of those, and in my brain, I automatically think moped because they're kind of shaped similarly. But a moped is motorized and pedal. Ah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, Donna and Taryn then are following these two, and we see that it's a drug ring. And then all four ladies become rather racist here. <laughs> it's a little socially uh, 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 insensitive. Yeah, it's the accent. Different time, the, but I'm the still. accents, right? The, the accents. Y- yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just uh, it doesn't it doesn't age well. No, we've dealt doesn't age well. We've dealt with this, and we have talked with about this recently. Um, in there was like an accent that Taryn did in like Hard Ticket to Hawaii, and then we had a couple of the accents that were in Hard Ticket to Hawaii that other folks were doing as well. Yeah. Luckily, we missed most of that cultural insensitivity in Picasso Trigger, but that's because it wasn't really all that culturally diverse. <laughs> at the same I mean, time, that, so, so I mean. While we didn't have it, it was for a shit reason. Right. And now we're back with some more cultural diversity, but at the same time, some generalized racial problems that we're going to have arise with that, including the um, really racially charged accents that we were discussing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, Anywho, we got to acknowledge I it. I had to but, make, at least make yeah. a note of it. No, we have to acknowledge it. It's something that we got to talk about. So then, you know, after you bust a, a, a drug ring, you, you go you go hang out in a hot tub. You're missing the part where they blow up one of the guys that tries to get away and burn them horribly before they arrest him. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, well, okay. Yeah, they, uh, you're right. I, I, for, I forgot to write that down. Fucking yeah, Taryn's they, a goddamn psychopath, dude. <laughs> she really is a psychopath, a klepto. She's everything, man. I, yeah, she's got a special place in my heart because she's the kind of crazy I can get behind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Just, you know, you won't have your wallet afterwards, but whatever. <laughs> She'll raid all of my coffers and take off and leave me as less of a human being that, and missing a limb, but hell, it would be worth it. That oldie, will you wake up without your wallet and probably in like a bathtub full of ice missing a kidney? But then she'll explain to you why it's good that she did that to you. And you'll believe it because she's going to gaslight the fuck out of you. <laughs> uh, that's Taryn. <laughs> that's our Taryn. Uh, so anyway, uh, then we hot tub scene. I mean, all right. Movie. We need to discuss this hot tub yeah. scene. 
All right. What do you have to say? Uh, there are four pairs of eight in total amazingly shaped breasts all at once in this hot tub. Yeah. And miraculously, the bubbles stay just below the nipple line. Yeah. And also are just there to help with the buoyancy of said breasts. Oof. This is genius fucking sexploitation filmmaking of the highest caliber that we need to appreciate. That's some cinematography right there. <laughs> That's some mighty fine shots there, Lou. I don't know why that person did win an Oscar for this. I mean, because uh, sexploitation is grossly overlooked because of the fact that it is quote unquote sleazier, I suppose. Uh, that's uh, dogging on sex workers, and I'm not down with you uh, shaming them. So, <laughs> Nor am I, nor am I. And we need to just appreciate and thank all of these lovely ladies for once again displaying their bodies for our entertainment. Thank you, movie, and thank you, ladies. You all look incredible. I agree. We then cut to Shane Abilene, and he's bony, and he gets a phone call while he's boning, because we're in Abilene. It's not that the phone call's interrupting the boning, it's that your boning is interrupting the phone calls, because you're just always boning. It's <laughs> Fair like, enough. It's like, it, it's like, you know, the people who always work out in the gym, it's like, oh, you just caught me in the gym. Well, you're always in the fucking gym, so I didn't catch you in the gym, all right? If I'm going to call you, I'm going to be interrupting something. <laughs> So um, I don't know if the Abilene's are always getting laid because sometimes they're just turning the women down because they know the opportunity will always be there. Well, I don't know, but I still hate them. It still reeks of fucking privilege. <laughs> okay. You can freely admit that you are just super jealous of all these hot ladies that are always on the actors that play the Abilene's. It's fine. Fucking privilege. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. My, my jealousy won't allow me to tell you the truth on that. Okay. <laughs> So anyway, we find out there's an island that needs some serum. They've, they've got some pretty nasty diseases happening. Uh, it's not just so, any I mean, island, but it's like a children's hospital for orphans in the middle of nowhere that are all in this island. Yeah, something like that. Like It's like a freaking out, uh, out of this world area. So it's like, fuck, man. I mean, what, what are we going to do? This uh, island contains every heartstring that has ever been plucked all at once. Yes. And if they don't get the medicine to that heartstring, then our ladies of lethal have failed at life. And our ladies at lethal can't do that. Then the ladies get a call from Shane, and hey, that's our first clip. Hello? Emergency call from Shane Abilene. He says he wants us all to hear him. Girls, come on over here. Hit the speakerphone, Patty. Shane Abilene is the new senior operative just assigned to Honolulu. Another Abilene? They just keep coming, don't they? Congratulations on this morning's bus. Good work. Washington is very impressed. Well, that means we get a vacation, right? I'm afraid not. How about a cash bonus? No such luck. We have a desperate situation. There's a case of serum at the North Shore Hospital. It's got to be picked up right away. Donna, Taryn, you'll be flying the medicine to a hospital on Knox Island. I'm leaving Honolulu now for Molokai. You have a 1,500-mile journey. I'll help you get off. See you in an hour. Ugh, the innuendo. Yep, yep, the innuendo. It's only going to get doing? worse from here. Um, also, I yep. uh, wanted to point out, even the uh, actresses that are just joining that are part of the lethal s strike team that was in the hot tub, one of yeah. them even comments how many Abilene's are there, and then Donna Spears' character, Donna, says they just keep coming, don't they? But, like, cracks yep. a grin, as in she's going to bag herself another Abilene notch on her belt. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's pretty much she's like, yeah, I'm going to hit this. So <laughs> She's like, if he looks anything like the last three Abilene's I've boned. Uh, well, Donna's looking to, you know, uh, collect the sack. So <laughs> yeah, you got to get the social diseases from every fucking Abilene you can. Hey, the Abilene's I'm sure are very clean. But OK, no, she has it all. She's She's got super syphilis at this point. <laughs> uh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. So anyway, um, Willis takes off in a copter, and then Donna goes and gets the serum from uh, from Abilene. Uh, so Donna and Shane meet up, and they're kind of loading up on guns and everything for their plane ride. Uh, and it's just double entendre city. It really is. <laughs> It's all entendres all the time with this. It's fucking insane. <laughs> At first, you feel like this particular Abilene Shane is doing innuendos that are making not necessarily Donna uncomfortable, but like you like you think like maybe she's not into it. 
Yeah. But like, I wondered if I was picking up the vibe of Donna Spear being like, "Ugh, why do I have to deal with this horrible fucking innuendo when this guy's clearly not even working for me? And then yeah. she starts picking up and doing some of the innuendo back at him with this kind of stuff. And it just feels uncomfortable because usually that kind of innuendo when someone's making those kinds of jokes where they could automatically go, oh, no, you misunderstood what I meant, you know, so they can cover their ass for sexually harassing people. It's what makes it feel sleazy and uncomfortable. And then yeah. when she starts doing it, back then it feels slightly less uncomfortable until you look at the look on donna spears face while she's doing this innuendo jokes back and forth and you kind of wonder where she's like why the fuck am i in this movie for like a brief minute while doing this dialogue i thought the same thing i was like god damn she is not happy yeah i don't know if <laughs> i'm just projecting my discomfort of seeing donna sphere be talked to in such a way from yet another fucking abilene or yeah. if it's just that the scene actually was that uncomfortable and i'm picking up what she's putting down because unlike a fucking Abilene, I have empathy for the feelings of women. Yeah, exactly. Fuck Jesus. Um, so anyway, uh, then Taryn's going to get a crossbow that the arrows blow shit up. So uh, she's got to be pretty happy. Yeah, considering uh, how much she likes to blow shit up for no fucking reason, that little psychopath should probably really enjoy that. And then we cut to Taryn telling Donna how it's been a long time since like her family's been in this area. Apparently her grandfather died in the South Pacific near these areas and they never found his body. So, holy shit. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what they were going for here, but... Uh, I, I know what they're going for here at the very end of the movie. Yeah, but at this point, you yeah. don't know what they're well, going for. At this point, here. you're like, well, yeah, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. Then we see a dude who's sitting on a fucking crotch rocket bike, and he's following uh, some folks himself. Then uh, we get some government horse shit, and that's our next clip. How could you expect the people of the Philippines not to be concerned with the return of their national fortune? Hey, look, Martinez, you may be a representative of the Philippine government, but to me, you're just another bleeding heart liberal. You want to feed the people of one country at the risk of jeopardizing every other human on the planet. You've made the right decision, Captain. Look, my neck is on the line here. I did what I said I would do. I got that satellite for 40 hours. I took it away from the Star Wars security analysis mode, the main line of defense for our country, and I did it for you. You won't be sorry. We'll see. Major Harrison will be here soon with that computer disc from the satellite system. It's covered every inch of that war zone. This is very familiar to parts of Malibu Express there. Yep. And also, hey, that guy was the agent in the last movie. He was Picasso whatever the fuck. Yeah, there's a lot of people being reused as different folks uh, in these yeah. movies. You'll see them get repurposed and... I just want to make that note. <laughs> I'm going to be more excited for when we actually hit the island and a bunch of actors that pop up that I recognize, like this guy and that guy that I want to talk about. Yeah, all right. Well, anyway, uh, we see the guy in that motor in the crutch rocket. Uh, he uses a dart and he knocks out one of the military guys that the captain says they're waiting for. Um, then we cut to Shane's talking to the ladies and they said it's going to be hard finding the island. The runway is washed out because there's a huge storm moving through and they're going to have to be fast because they're going to have to land and then try to get out of the way of that storm. And it's a shit ton of uh, water. Water they have to cover a longer flight than they're used to yeah they're setting it all up about basically they're going to crash is what they're trying to set up is like this is a really dangerous flight that they're risking to save these heartstrings in the middle of that isolated island and if they don't save the heartstrings they're gonna die trying court you bleeding heart liberal <laughs> yes i'm a very rare and beautiful snowflake now move on <laughs> All right, excellent. So um, then we see the guy, um, he's uh, the biker guy, the guy in the crotch rocket who knocked out the one military guy. He's now getting some top secret info. So uh, then we could do, he then meets up with our military captain, and that is our next clip. Major Harrison, Captain John Andreas, this is Paul Michaels of Computer Control Central. He's got top security clearance. Here's the computer disk and satellite reconnaissance, Captain. I appreciate the Army giving up the satellite time, but the Navy isn't too pleased about having an Army officer monitoring our team. Oh, don't worry, Captain. Even though my presence was requested by the State Department, I'm here to offer my assistance directly under your command. Pleased to hear that. Major Harrison, Rodrigo Martinez. Diplomatic representative and military advisor from the government of the Philippines. I'm surprised to see the army using your military talent to serve as a delivery boy. My talents as an expert pilot 
astronaut and technical advisor will be utilized to their fullest. If we do detect any treasure, I will provide the means to get to it and be there with you to secure it. Gentlemen, I've taken the satellite reconnaissance information you provided on this disk and cross-referenced every Japanese warship known to have sunk in this area of the South Pacific between 1941 and 1943. The computer has identified 371 sunken Japanese vessels in an area of 2 million square miles of ocean. Well, we can eliminate the large warships. Where does that leave us? A total of 127 smaller vessels. One of those could be the one you're looking for. You will need more specific information about where the boat was heading in 1943 in order to narrow down the possibilities. Good day, gentlemen. I hope I've been helpful. Paul, this information is top secret. I've just taken care of that, Captain. Good job. Thank you. And our company is very grateful for the government contracts, Captain. I'm very grateful to be off to the Bahamas for one month. Vacation? Yes, sir. Well earned. Enjoy. Thank you. Right now, two agents from the Japanese Army Intelligence Corps are collecting information from an Admiral, Kenji Anada. Bring me the date on that. The information from Admiral Inada should be all we need in order to spot the ship we want. Better be our man. We checked out every detail, down to his air folders. During World War II, I believe General Tomoyuki Yamashita was the man most responsible for the looting of my country. Admiral Inada was under his direct command. I know we're on the right track. Agents will meet us tomorrow at 1300 hours in our Honolulu compound. We leave at dawn on a military jet. Thanks for the same, Captain, but my government has arranged transportation for me tonight. Okay, I need to back up here a minute. Yep. All right, so the two actresses that were teaming up with the ladies of Lethal that we follow mostly through this movie and from the other ones, Donna yeah. and Taryn, the one who plays yeah. Rocky is Lisa London or London. She seems to have taken the place of Edie because now it's Rocky's place. Right. I need to talk specifically about Lisa London because she has been in a shit ton of films. And I believe that she is the one who is, she's a naked redhead lady in Dragnet that they go to visit the pornographer in the scene where Sylvia Wiss, I think, is the character who is, um, you know, she's a kind of older lady at that point, and she was like one of the earliest uh, bait mates or whatever, and then she asked Mr. Friday if uh, her breasts still seem firm and then show them to him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I gotcha. <laughs> there's like a, <laughs> yeah, there, I remember that. There's a redhead lady in the background that I was transfixed on that scene because she's running around topless, and I believe that that is Miss London, and I wanted to point that out, that I recognized her from that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, and then, hey, whatever it takes. And then the one military guy was also he played uh, that Romero character in uh, Malibu Express as well. I don't know if you remember that or not. Which I think was the that was the main uh, bad guy, wasn't it? That was the yeah. I think you're right. The head gangster yeah. guy. He think he played Romero yeah. in that as well. So, like I said, there's going to be different people popping up as different characters throughout this series because Sedaris clearly liked to work with a lot of different actors, and they all had a lot of fun together. So yeah. Well, there you go. Right. And you know, probably when you get. If you have a good working relationship, especially when you're trying to do sex exploitation, this is, you know, going to happen. Yeah, you need people that are going to be comfortable with you and your camera crew if you want them to yeah. be naked and perform sex acts, even if it's fake, in front of you. Exactly. Yes, that's very true. So then those two guys, they meet with a dying man who was a military like uh, guy. And he talks about the gold he hid, telling him the island where he hid it at. Was this that so, um, the the Anada or Admiral Anada or whatever that they were? Yeah, talking Admiral about? Anada. And then we have a flashback to that guy talking about transporting all the gold. So they're of course getting information as to where this uh, this stuff is. The guys they said they're going to go find that gold, but that old man then cautions them to be very careful trying to go get it. So. It's like it's cursed or something or just, you know, yeah. be careful. It's a weird thing that they're, they're trying to set up that there might be some kind of a supernatural element to this particular island that yeah. they're about to head to. But then they just kind of drop that thread and 
they sort of play it up for a little bit, but then they just kind of drop it right off the bat too. Yeah, exactly. So um, the then we see uh, uh, Donna and Taryn. Uh, they are caught up in this storm. It is really bad, and they got to refill on gas and then drop off the medicine. Uh, so, uh, well, no, they're not caught in the storm. They're trying to get in front of the storm, and so they take off. Some dudes then meet up with another guy in his car, and they get a briefcase from him. And when they get in the car, it explodes, killing another man. So, all right. That was kind of interesting because he actually says, don't blow it all at once or something as he hands up yeah. the briefcase. And then when they drive yeah. off, the briefcase explodes him. That was awesome. Exactly. It was a pretty good, uh, you know, kill line. Yeah. Uh, to use. Yeah. I used uh, to see you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You've been fired. So <laughs> Remember when I said I'd kill you last? I lied. I, love, <laughs> I fucking love Arnold. Donna and then uh, uh, Taryn, they, uh, like it, because they now are caught in the storm, all their clothes are wet. So while they're in the plane, they, of course, get changed. Well, yeah. The, so the, thank you, movie. Yeah, the movie had to have them pop their boobs out because it's been like five minutes since we've seen some breasts, give or take. Yes, exactly. Maybe longer. I don't know. As the movies go on, it seems like it's taking longer and longer before we get nude scenes to happen. Yeah, I don't like movies. that. <laughs> I don't like it. I'm okay with it because uh, we still get really quality shots like this where they're soaked and naked and then they, you know, change clothes mid-flight when they're on autopilot in a storm. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah, yeah. We also got to talk about the process shots that they do that make it look like the plane is in flight. Uh, both the uh, model airplane that they film in a fake storm. That stuff looks great. And then the lady sitting inside the plane with the storm hitting the outside of the plane as they're filming it. That looked really good as well. They really spent some money on doing these shots. They did. They really did. Um, the um, uh, then we cut to our mustache guy and his lady. They're talking in our next clip. They talking and they fucking in our next clip. Yes. After nearly half a century, we are ready to reap the spoils of the Great War. What a coup! This fortune will support the revolution. We will be revered by our party. Our names will be in the history books. My ideology means far more to me than fame and adulation. The good of the party is my reward. That sounds like socialism, Matt. That definitely does, or socialism or the Communist Party right there, but somebody's into something. There's nothing commie about that lady's body, though. No, 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 no. And uh, and then, yes, as you said, they uh, they boned like crazy. So <laughs> They boned like two socialists trying to free the world with sex. <laughs> They bone like two socialists who just found out that, uh, you know, uh, capitalism died. <laughs> so, so I figured they boned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, man. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a relatively tame by nowadays standard scene. It's, it was steamy. It was steamy. Right. I thought it was steamy. But that's the thing is it's like that old school style, like late 80s, early 90s, erotic thriller, quote unquote, like passionate lovemaking sessions that I yeah. really enjoy in a Sedaris film because he knows what he's doing when he films that stuff because it's that's enjoyable for everybody watching it because whoever might be into dudes and are watching this, you know, well-shaped dude getting his going on and his O face being made, they're going to enjoy that. Whoever's into ladies and loves to look at a naked lady's body as she's writhing in pleasure they're going to enjoy her and it's filmed like you know through the right kind of gauzy lens and it's just this very romantic atmosphere of them getting down to some socialism sex yes i want some memes Every about getting down to some socialism sex it's, it's socialism sex everyone gets an orgasm <laughs> everyone the people deserve orgasms not, not just the top one percent everyone <laughs> <laughs> everybody gets to come without having to worry about a kid being made and you get an orgasm. And you get an orgasm. Everyone gets an orgasm. Not just an orgasm, but a guilt-free, disease-free, yeah. perfectly safe sex orgasm that you can brag about for years to come. Uh, Donna and uh, uh, Taryn are having a lot of plane problems within the storm. Uh, things are going poorly for them. Yeah, they get shot by electricity from the lightning, and it shocks the fuck out of all the instruments. The only thing that's working is their artificial horizon. And yeah. that's like their saving grace to keep them from plummeting, because when you don't have the right uh, instruments and you're flying and you can't see in the storm, you don't even know if you're heading towards the ground or not. Exactly. Uh, mustache, we cut to Mustache and Lady have two agents jumped and murdered. So, it's fucked up. These these people are evil. Uh, they, see, they, they are socialists, Matt. They're murdering people for their own ends. Yep, yep, yep. They're 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 capitalists. <laughs> <laughs> 
That was capitalist sex we just saw. <laughs> no, nobody paid for it. No, <laughs> that's one. Well, not that we know. Um, let's see here. Uh, then we see the killers copy the IDs and grab a disc from the the dead agents. Okay, these two guys that have done the killing, we need to talk about them because they are yes. very well known stunt actors. And the one guy you're going to see him as that guy in just about every movie. Whenever you needed Asian looking bad guy, he would show up. He was up. bald, but with hair on the back. He had the Hogan, yeah, the Hulk Hogan hairstyle. Al- he was bald, but he was rock. Long hair. Al Leong, a lot of our listeners would know him as Genghis Kong in Bill and Ted's. He was one of the bad guys in Die Hard. He's the guy that uh, Endo, I think his name is, he tortures Mel Gibson's character in Lethal Weapon. Um, he's also, uh, believe it or not, I, uh, he's also one of the bad ninja guys in um, Big Trouble in Little China. That was the next on my list as well that people would probably recognize him from that. He shows up in a shit ton of other things. You will recognize Ali Ong. He's basically doesn't, that guy. And he's actually, doesn't he use a meat cleaver? Yeah, in uh, <laughs> in Big Trouble in Little China, he's one of the main bad guys of the the red, whatever the red sash is. Yeah, I forget what yeah. their name is for that. But he's the one that uses the meat cleaver and does a lot of the martial arts action in that um with the meat cleaver he is a very well accomplished martial artist as you will see in a lot of his roles um and i believe that he and our other character that is with him were there specifically to bring more skilled martial arts into this film that other actor is eric chen and he's actually more well known as a stunt man and he's been in a shit ton of stuff including pirates of the caribbean um some jet lee movies jackie chan stuff basically a stunt performer with martial martial arts experience that is needed for Hollywood films. He's usually there. And I think he may have even at one point in time, maybe he doubled Chalian fat um, because he's been in a couple of his movies too. Like I said, I don't know hundred percent for sure. I just know I've seen him whenever they need a martial arts guy. I've, I recognized his face. So these two together, Al Leong and uh, Eric Chen, when they pop up, I, I was super excited. <laughs> yep. So now from what we've seen so far, these two question the admiral themselves to find out about the gold and now have replaced the other two asian agents who were helping the military and mustache man find the gold so now we have like three or four interested parties in the fucking gold so for a sedaris film it's getting rather complex well basically they're infiltrating it from another group where we don't know what for sure and the um the mustache guy and his socialists sexy uh swing time girlfriend are double crossing the military that they're we are going to they're going to and we know that for sure and the military's probably already planning on double crossing them right and then and now we have these other two who mustache is mustache never met the other um japanese agents so he doesn't know what they look like now these two are posing as the japanese agents they just killed and they're probably gonna want to double cross mustache man what did you think about that martial arts fight where they actually end up taking him out was it decent to you or it wasn't half bad. It's for a Sedaris film. It's like the best that we've gotten for, for fights. Yeah, exactly. For a Sedaris film, it wasn't bad at all. So it was pretty good. It was worth the move to get your hands on some actors that can actually do the martial arts stuff. It's totally worth it. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree. Um, I thought it was entertaining at least. So good on them. And then we cut to Taryn and Donna have to crash land the plane. Uh, and then we cut to the military are having a meet up. And that's our next clip. It is to the great credit of our nations that we finally put to rest a black mark against our ancestors. We gladly cooperate with you in your most worthy endeavor. My government has asked me personally to present you two loyal gentlemen with these antique Buddha as humble token of our appreciation. This screen represents data from satellite reconnaissance. It reveals 127 sunken ships within the target area. Now, I'll take this and cross-reference it with the information provided by Admiral Inada. So, according to the Admiral's log, this line represents the known route traveled by the boat. At the last checkpoint, they were right here. Now, we can calculate a maximum range they could have traveled. Somewhere within this area. Next, we deduce a vector shift to allow for the effects of the storms they encountered. The last step is to do a probability calculation using all known data. Captain Andreas, just press enter in order to view the final result. Good day, gentlemen. Jesus, is that remote. The weather in that part of the world can be violently unstable. Japanese sure picked one hell of a savage beach to crash their boat on. 
We're going to need a special aircraft to get in that area with complete secrecy. Captain, I'll put together a package. I bet no one's ever set foot on that island. He said the movie, that makes Matt happy. Yes. Yay! <laughs> it makes me happy when they say the title of the movie. Uh, see here. All right. And then we see Donna and Taryn. They, we cut back to them, and they have found this island. I'm assuming it's this island by this point. I'm like, they're probably on the same island. Duh. Um, <laughs> well, of course, they're going to end up wherever there is riches. Taryn has to fucking rob the coffers again. Yeah, hey, hey, don't ruin it. Oh, yeah, we're not jumping ahead uh, yet. Oh, well, you know she's going to do it. It's just a matter of how. And also, you know she's going to do it, and you know she's going to find a way to make us all think that she deserved to have all that. Yeah, that she earned it because she's a witness protection program, and she's a private citizen, not an agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my fucking God. So anyway, uh, so they get out of the plane as the plane is on fire, and they're trying to get that put out. And Taryn says she seems to remember this island. Okay. Uh, yeah, that right. really kind of goes nowhere, doesn't it? Yeah, it really doesn't. Uh, then the because it also makes zero sense even for her story with this island. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. They're tr- again, they're playing at this sort of like spiritual awakening ghost story thing where maybe she'll recognize what's going on, but nope, they just kind of leave that thread dangling. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, we see bad guys are tracking the plane. Um, the lady set up camp, but somebody is watching them. Bad guys have a meetup, and that's our next clip. Let me be sure the secrecy of our mission is intact. We're in an abandoned military installation on the north shore of Oahu. Nobody knows we're here. How's it looking, Major? We should have one hell of a flight. I've topped off the auxiliary fuel tanks. We're going to be flying underneath all radar surveillance. Everything should be okay as long as the winds are right. She's quiet. She's fast. A couple more hours, we'll be ready to go, Captain. My government grows impatient. Give it a rest, Martinez. Yeah, give it a rest, Martinez. (laughs) Don't be so rude. Uh, Martinez then gets with this woman, and they bone in the car, so... They have some more of that socialist sex in the car. Um, (laughs) She is way too passionate for him. He seems really disinterested in what she has to offer in a lot of cases. Yeah, yeah. Because she's like, Uh, she's got Also, the mustache is weak. It's a weak mustache game he's got going on, mustache. (laughs) Not everybody can be Tom Selleck and Burt Reynolds, man. I know, right? Um, Then we cut to Donna and Taryn build a shelter. And after they build a shelter, yeah, what do you do? You hop in the ocean and swim naked because fuck. (laughs) I get it. Why not? That scene of them stripping down, throwing their clothes uh, further up on the beach to keep them from getting swept away into the ocean and then running into the ocean um, and then like slowly walking once they're in the sunset and they're silhouetted. That was once again, some really well shot, beautiful cinematography. You can't discount some of the shots that are actually in this film. You know, we have to kind of discuss it, but that sunset, the way that they were front lit so that you only saw their silhouettes against that beautiful sunset. And then it accented the shape of their body and then was also like the heat lines that went up around them just kind of did this really cool cinematic thing and seeing it on blu-ray on my tv was amazing i just was so yeah. stoked and happy about that shot and then the added bonus was that both uh <laughs> hope marie carlton and donna spears were naked once again which you know you can't complain about that yeah right i i, I i'm not i'm not complaining about it no Damn it. never would i complain <laughs> about such a thing i don't even know i don't even know how you would complain about such such things why would you <laughs> uh you're an asshole if you complain okay yeah i agree i totally agree um let's see here the other girls wake up with a phone call uh they are told they have to meet someplace and by the way these girls woke up like in the they fell asleep in the weirdest positions like sitting up on a couch and say don't these people have beds i think they were partying matt and that's where they passed out all right. Well, I mean, good for them, I guess. I don't. I don't know what's going on. Uh, so anyway, they get a phone call and they are told they have to go meet Shane someplace. So they get naked uh, just to put on different tops, and they have to go talk about the missing Donna and Taryn situation. I was very, very grateful that these two actresses popped up again to pop their tops for us once more and stand just perfect in camera and switch from side to side as they're getting undressed and undressed, so that you can see them in profile and then straight on then the other side profile. They very prominently were displaying their top halves of their bodies for us. And yes, thank you, ladies, and thank you, movie. 
Exactly. Everything's going according to plan. <laughs> or at least everything's quite enjoyable to see. Yes, right. Um, then uh, we see Donna and Taryn. They're getting some food. And then uh, after eating, they find some foot pr- foot tracks. So they're starting to realize they may not be alone on this island. Um, the two then talk, and that becomes our next clip. In my calculations, we're about 600 miles northeast of Molokai. Boy, are we off course. They're never going to find us. The nearest airline route's 160 miles west of here. Taryn, could you give me a blanket from the plane, honey? I'm feeling a bit of a chill. Sure, Donna. Thanks. <laughs> that was a very usable dialogue. I'm glad that you grabbed that clip. Well, well I grabbed it because they were doing the calculations. And then, like, how far away they were. And I just thought it was funny. According to my calculations, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, where's your calculator at? You doing all that in your head, are you? On a fucking island? <laughs> What exactly are you trying to say that, uh... No one can do those kind of calculations without machine help. Mm, I'm pretty sure that Donna Hamilton can, because she's a super agent. Fuck you. There's no such thing as super anything. (laughs) When it's Donna Hamilton, she gets to do anything she wants to do because she's played by Donna Spears. All right, well, there you go. Well, anyway, Taryn is... Then Taryn actually gets attacked, and Donna chases whatever whoever it is off yeah Um, there's been somebody walking around in the background with like ripped up clothes that we've seen here and there and a samurai sword but not enough to really know what's going on i mean yeah we don't know you can figure it out if you know your world war ii history of like abandoned islands and people that ended up on them in such a way so i won't give it away just yet but like you can see it coming if you know some of your world war ii history yeah exactly um so then they use Shane's goodie package to try to, you know, uh, defend themselves. Uh, later that night, the the ladies are sleeping, and Taryn hears, then sees movement. They shoot some guns, but all they're able to do is kill a rooster. And did they actually kill a rooster? I hope that that was, um, they bought pieces from a slaughterhouse. Yeah. Uh, Maybe. Because that looked real. Yeah, the pieces that they pulled up look real. I just hope that they didn't actually kill them themselves on film. Like, I don't think they blew it up or shot it up or anything. I Um, thought that was a little little rough. Did you recognize the type of bullpop gun that uh, they got from uh, Shane that uh, she was firing? Yeah, yeah, um, wasn't that used... um, Well, it was used in Die Hard, I know. Yes, it's been used Uh, in a lot of different films. I forget, is it a Strayer or something? I can't remember the name of it, but it's one of the earliest bullpop designs for a gun and it's really bizarre to see the way that Donna Spear is handling that gun because the weight of it would be more towards the back so she'd want to shoulder it or at least to hold it in such a way that she'd be shouldering it when she's ready to fire because that's where all the mechanisms are and that's where you need to brace all of the weight and everything. I think if she would have fired it actually from the hip kind of like how she was holding it, it would have flown out of her hands. Yeah, right. Uh, Well, anyway, then the ladies decide they're going to go on the hunt for whatever is out there. Well, yeah, they came too close for comfort, so they need to take care of it. But you see this dude's watching them from the shadows. And then Donna gets uh, tripped up. She, like, uh, fucking gets caught in a booby trap. Not the kind you're thinking of, folks. Chill. No, no, yeah, yeah, no. It didn't catch her Uh, by the boobs. She, yeah, and then this old man is seen, but he runs off, uh, and then we hear a plane landing. Did you recognize the actor who's playing the old man that is, like, the, the older <laughs> no, island inhabitant? I did not. I have seen him on a ton of 70s and 80s TV. He's usually a guest star of certain spots here and there. The thing yeah. I recognize him the most from is when I was a kid, he was in an episode of Magnum P.I. I think he was like a district attorney or a lawyer of some sort or maybe a public defender that was working with Magnum on a case. Oh, uh, well, there you go. Yeah, that's. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm ashamed that I recognized him from that kind of, but I had to just, <laughs> I'm just going to own it and move on. Own it. Um. God damn it. Okay, so then the old man he goes and uncovers some box with a the uh, and it has a lot of Japanese Empire stuff inside of it, and then a picture of an American family. All right, here's where we can talk about it. He is a soldier yeah. from World War Two has that has been yes. stranded on this island since World War Two. Correct. And if you these are all true facts. Yeah, and if you know your World War II history, that was actually something that ended up happening where people would be hopping around on some of these islands in the Pacific that are not necessarily thought to be inhabited, and they would find some of these guys that went kind of ronin and off on their own that had no idea that the war was over and had aged tremendously living alone in seclusion and kind of lost their minds. They're, 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 yeah. They found a few of these 
various soldiers that were left behind like that, um, mostly on the Japanese side, because I think the Americans were pretty much all rescued or at least knew the war would be over by the time they were found. Well, and also it's it's very different on how, you know, each country treated its soldiers at the time. Right. We would go looking for ours and Japanese pretty much assumed that they were dead at that point if they disappeared and yeah. didn't report back. Exactly. Um, but even in Japanese but movies. But now, now in Japanese defense they were also now just getting over getting bombed twice by two nuclear weapons right so that too you can like a lot of stuff happens <laughs> but they also i mean there was the kamikaze pilots where they would actually be killing themselves and using their their airplanes yep. as missiles as cruise you know guided missiles uh one of the things i wanted to point out too uh even in japanese movies like there's a godzilla film where some of the plot is based on one of these guys that lived on an island like that where he was stranded since world war ii yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, nice. I mean, it's it's something that is in the zeitgeist of both cultures, um, that it's popped up in our movies and our TV and everything like that. It's something that, that has happened where someone during war would get stranded on a remote island somewhere and then just have to live out their life and not really know what's happening. Yes, exactly. While Taryn is excited by the plane, but Donna is being very cautious, and that's kind of how they've always been, these two characters. Yeah. Taryn's the excitable young one, and Donna's the experienced one who's cautious. Right. So Donna's going to be making sure that she's kind of staying on the periphery and kind of keeping an eye on what's going on, and she lets her pawn that is Taryn just run right in screaming, I'm in the witness protection program, don't you want to meet me? <laughs> Taryn is, like, Taryn is you, bait. You gotta stop introducing yourself like that. Right. Taryn's bait. Let's face it. That's what Taryn yeah. is. Taryn Taryn is bait for Donna, and so when Taryn's like, I'm stealing all this money, Donna's like, well, I guess you earned that. You were bait this whole yeah, time. I mean, yeah, I bet you were human bait, yeah. I mean... <laughs> o- I bet, yeah. Operation Get Behind Taryn, everyone. <laughs> Operation Human Shield is a go. <laughs> uh, so, um, the old man we see is preparing, so he's getting ready to do battle, as you would say. Uh, then, uh, the... The Then the two ladies are starting to figure out after seeing the guys get off the plane that uh, this plane's not for them. It's not like a rescue mission. What an uh, interesting so we- plane, too, where it's like a monopod, but the prop yeah. is on this thing that's facing backwards that stands on top of the plane. It, it doesn't look safe. <laughs> yeah. When I was looking at that, I'm like, how does this weird contraption work? This looks like something that Da Vinci drew out and somebody just decided they're going to make it work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not, yeah, I'm just like, that, you can't fly that. That, that, that doesn't work. This plane belongs <laughs> in a futuristic movie from the 1920s. Yeah. Um, so, uh, the guys are now all searching with metal detectors while the ladies and the old man separately watch them. Uh, Taryn is automatically turned on by the, uh, the, the younger dude who took the place of the other guy. <laughs> if, if you, if you're going to try to follow at home. Yeah. Uh, so the, the guy, the one guy who was riding around the crotch rocket earlier turns into this dude. Yeah. The dude, so. the dude that was like all blonde and looking like a human Ken doll. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah, there you go. That's yeah. Turns into that dude. She's that's kind of her type is that kind of guy. That, uh, duh. I mean, she dated that sports reporter, dude. I mean, what are you going to do there? <laughs> <laughs> For like a little bit, I thought that was the same actor. They just put him in a different role. <laughs> I thought so, too. I that's I, I still thought that until you were like, no, I think that's the guy who played the main bad guy. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, then the ladies get caught, and that is our next clip. But she's dead. Get up. Come on in. Who are you? What are you doing here? We're Americans. We run a cargo airline on Molokai. We were transporting some medical supplies. We got caught in a storm. Our plane went down four days ago. A little off course, weren't you? They're lying. Who do you work for? Our plane's right around that bend. Go check it out. Let's tie him up. Tie this up. Okay, okay, yeah, you can. We have no choice. There's too much at stake here. Besides, it might be good for these bimbos. Bimbos? Mm. If you knew what was good for you, you wouldn't tie us up. You're right. I should shoot you. Let's go. Come on. A couple of sweet angels of mercy who just happened to be armed for combat. Even Mother Teresa has her dark side. Who else knows you're here? My entire sorority. And they're going to be real pissed if I'm not back by Hell Week. Keep making jokes. But you get in our way and we'll kill you. Come on, let's go. Well, well there's Taryn just being our uh, so precocious. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> she's like, I'm going to skin you and wear it later. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, Holy Jesus. Okay, so settle down. And then Donna's all uh, like, oh, Taryn, you're so funny. Shut up or I'll skin you too. Jesus, Taryn, chill out. <laughs> I know there's money on this island. I can smell it. I'll kill you all for it. Yeah, that's uh, she's definitely a capitalist. That's our Taryn. That's our Taryn. Uh, then we cut to the mustaches girlfriend. She's bringing in her crew of guys who are not on her side and wanting to double cross her. So <laughs> uh, the guys then find a box that's buried in the ground and the old man's watching. Um, the old man then shows up. And he helps cut Taryn loose from her restraints. There's a little bit of a tense scene, though, because he at yeah. first he's got the blade up and then um, and Donna, I think, I think they we think like he's going to kill Donna and then yeah. he cuts Taryn loose. Right. Well, they think he's going to attack Taryn because he's closer to her with the blade raised and Donna pulls yeah. her boot pistol that the guys didn't bother uh, to try and look for because they just thought she was a lady and she wouldn't be smart enough to have another gun. No, I mean, they did pretty much call her a bimbo. So Right. That was the biggest mistake. You don't ever underestimate Donna Hamilton. God damn it. That's right. Jeez, Court, <laughs> just stop white knighting. Okay? <laughs> so she pulls a gun on the guy and she's going to shoot him. But there's something in the way that he looks at her um, that she realizes that he's not going to hurt. He, he's not the threat. Right. And then also she does pretty much just fully admit to Taryn like, hey, you're the bait anyway. So if he was going to kill you, then I was going to shoot him before he could get to me. And that's yeah. the way that I know if I could trust him or not. <laughs> I'm willing to make that sacrifice <laughs> of your life, Taryn. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> and again, Taryn is like, Operation Human Shield is a go. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no wonder I need to get all of this money. Look what you put me through, Donna. And Donna's like, yeah, no, true, true enough. <laughs> that's, that's fine. You can have all the money here. Donna's like, We're fine. I don't care what spoils of war crimes you're pulling off here, Taryn, as long <laughs> as I get my cut. Yeah, 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 right. As long as and, uh, and Donna's only cut is ensuring that Taryn will always be around to be used as a human shield for Donna. Yeah, but Taryn does share it. Like the last couple of movies, she talks about how she's going to split the money with everybody in Lethal or whatever. Yeah, no, that's true. She does share. She wants to take care of her friends. Right. It's very nice. It's also hush money. Let's be let's be frank about yeah. this. Taryn is paying the agents hush money, where she would just keep her mouth shut and then go back and get the stuff on her own, but Taryn can't keep her mouth shut, so she's bragging and bribing all at once. Is she a Trump? Is that what her real last name is, Taryn yeah, Trump? I, yeah, it's, it's I, I think we know who her real father is. <laughs> so. No, she's far too gorgeous for that to be her real father. Yeah, well, okay, well, that's true, too. Uh, so he cuts Taryn loose, and we see that it is the gold bars the bad guys uh, have been after. It's a, they find him. Then a mustache's girlfriend and her crew show up, and then that's when her crew double-cross them and kill her, kill her, sending everyone scattering. Okay, so this is... Uh, and then one of them even says, uh, too bad we're mercenaries, not communists. This is where it gets kind of weird, because the... Communist folks were going to double cross the American military. The American military also has its own thing from within that it has to worry about that hasn't been fully revealed just yet, which is sideloaded yep. into the plot. And then yeah. this double cross that they were going to do with the hired mercenaries, the mercenaries were like, fuck you. Why do I want to take the money that you're offering me to help you get this gold when I can just murder you on this island and keep when the gold for myself? The gold. Yeah, we can all just split the gold amongst ourselves as mercenaries and maybe kill off some of the other mercenaries so our cuts become even bigger. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just all a big everyone's double crossing everybody. Yeah, if but when you put in one too many double crosses, it, I start to I, I started drowning out at this point. I'm like, uh, I'm 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 not really interested. It's too many double crosses. Well, even when I was trying to like basically describe the double crosses that were happening here, they're double crosses that are not as easily followed as we had in the last film. The Picasso yeah. trigger double and triple cross and double agent stuff that worked, and they actually set that up well. In this case, they're just like, ha, the Spanish Inquisition. You never expected us. Yeah. That's how they well, hit then, you with it. One of the mercenaries gets a machete right into his chest by the old man. Um, In a very impressive throw that was clearly just a cut to make it look so. Yes. Then two guys run but are tackled by Donna and Taryn. Uh, they fall, and this is the captain and the blonde-haired kid. They're tackled by Donna and Taryn. They fall, but uh, then we find out they're actually good guys. Um, and so the ladies give them their guns back, and they'll head back to the plane and guard it. Uh, it, while the other, while Donna and Taryn tries to find out who threw the machete. We know who threw the machete and Donna and Taryn should know, but they, they yeah. basically are kind of overlooking it. I think Donna was preoccupied by the fact that there's man meat on the island that she can get behind. And so was Taryn. 
Yeah, she's tr- Don is trying to figure out if any of their last names are Abilene. <laughs> are you an Abilene? No, guess are not. You? No, are you sure? You could lie to me. <laughs> I would totally uh, tell Donna Hamilton my last name was Abilene. Fuck yeah, I would too, man. It seems to be the easiest way, man, <laughs> to get anything going. I think we should just find an Abilene and be adopted, Matt. I think so. I thought, uh, you know, we're, we're not, I mean, it's not like you have to give us money or nothing. Just adopt us or our last name. I'm just going to change my last name. <laughs> just, I don't have to get adopted. I'm an adult. <laughs> Go down and change my last name to Abilene. <laughs> I don't know if it works like that. You can't just walk up and be like, so my name's Matt Abilene. <laughs> my name's now Matt Syopoline. So. <laughs> Syop Abilene. Say up, Abilene. It's hyphenated. <laughs> uh, it's like you married yourself after you changed your name. Let's see here. All right. We cut to Mustache Man. He's running through the jungle panicking, and it got to suck for him, man. I, for, for all their maybe evil, double-crossy plans, he did love that woman. I mean, that was the love of his life. He will never find a more passionate uh, lover who also is into communism as much as him. Yeah. And I mean, that's got to hurt. He would, that was really his, his perfect... Perfect, perfect person. <laughs> exactly. And she died in a really kick-ass spiky leather and chrome bra that we forgot to yeah. mention that was amazing. That, was, that is true. That was the weirdest outfit choice to infiltrate a hot Hawaiian island. I mean, the top half of it for a hot Hawaiian island made sense. Yeah. You know. Still, I, I, don't, I don't know, man. Just, it, it was an odd choice. You, It looked like she went with style instead of functionality. I'm just saying. I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, uh, so then our uh, two military guys get in a fight with the two, mini- two of the uh, mercenaries, and they beat the fuck out of them. Just beat the shit out of the two military guys. Uh, so then Donna stops them and kills one, and the other mercenary runs. Um, then we see a mustache man finds the gold and grabs it, so he runs off with it. He doesn't he get kills... all of it, though. He only has a few he, bars. He, but he gets enough for him, I guess. Yeah, he grabbed, like, there, some of them, some of the people had been, like, carrying him off, and then during this skirmish, the bars got dropped, and it's, like, six of them that he gets his hands on. Yeah, and uh, the uh, then we see uh, Mustache Man, then uh, he kills actually one of the mercs and uh, escapes with the gold there. So uh, one of the mercs was like, hey, man, just got blasted, but good job by the uh, uh, mustache dude. <laughs> um, then Taryn and the blonde haired dude, uh, Miller two dude, they flirt, uh, which, uh, you know, because that's what Taryn's going to do. And, yeah, there's but death they get, all around them. People are being horrendously murdered, and Taryn just can't wait to jump on some dick. She sees a bunch of death, and Taryn automatically is all like... Want to hop on some dick after that. <laughs> You're way more into her right now, aren't you? <laughs> right after she sees it, she's like, yeah, yeah. death all around, people being senselessly <laughs> murdered? Want to hop on some <laughs> dick after that. Yeah, that, that does sound like kind of what, what's happening here. Uh, <laughs> and to answer your question, yes, I'm very much all about her after that. Yeah, right. But they get interrupted by the old man. Uh, and then Taryn tells the military guy that that's her guy. So uh, somehow she just knows that they're on the same side now. Uh, Donna and Taryn, they have a shootout with Mustache Man. And Taryn uses her special crossbow missile. Uh, so... <laughs> It, it blows some shit up. There's more shooting, and he's um uh, he's about to get on a boat, but she fires another crossbow missile, blowing up said boat. Okay, we got to we got to talk about this, right? Uh, he's hiding yeah, behind yeah. a very thick tree when she fires the first crossbow bolt. Yeah, she doesn't fire it past the tree where the explosion would get him from behind and take care of him. Yeah, she doesn't think about that. She just fires the tree no. and blows up the cover. Exactly. Then he runs off. He goes to get into the raft. He knocks over a can of gas on his own like a dumbass because he's in a hurry. He's there with the gold bars. He's basically just getting ready to go away. And as he is fleeing with the gold bars, she shoots the boat, burning him alive and blowing him up, horrendously murdering him while noting where the gold bars are and where they fall. And she even looks down. They give that little ting as they glitter in the sunlight under the water. And she just smiles and wanders off going, I've got the spoils of my war. The blood has hath flowed <laughs> well then a bad guy gets the drop on Taryn and makes the other three drop their weapons but then the old man charges and is shot a lot but he's able to stab the bad guy and after all that as he lays there dying gives Taryn the picture of this family 
Well, then what we find is as the old man is dying, he's telling the story about how he and his crew were on this island guarding these, this gold. When three Americans came up, and what he said was he started out by saying, and this, the captain of the military is, is translating, is that he wouldn't kill those eyes again. So what we're supposed to say is Taryn's father wa- or grandfather washed up on this island. And the the old Japanese soldier and his crew killed the American crew who had just washed up, I think, from like a shipwreck or something. And as they all sat there, except for him, everyone else, all the other guys, one guy just charged into the ocean. One guy killed himself. And then that guy stayed behind. And so we know the guy who went to the ocean to swim must have been the admiral who was saved to tell where this gold is. Yeah, it feels like they probably should have shown us this at the start of the movie, and then he could have just been explaining it later on as to what it was that we were seeing when all of these murders start taking place. Yeah. This whole plot line, it feels like Andy Sedaris may have read some type of a history book about something like this that took place on an island somewhere during World War II and that the gold was never found or whatever and people have gone searching for it, you know, and he just kind of like sideloaded this story into them getting trapped on an island with drug dealer types again. That already just got super, super high. (laughs) I mean, maybe a little bit of all of the above. (laughs) Maybe he got a little chocolate in his peanut butter and then a little peanut butter in his chocolate. And then he mixed it up with some ice cream and decided he had something quite delicious. And then some guy with the last name Reese killed him and took the recipe for himself. (laughs) And then another guy killed Reese and decided to start a queen of dairy. Yeah. (laughs) So then uh, the guys and the ladies decide they will meet over dinner and the ladies take the plane uh, and they take off. They're out of there. Uh, after the ladies are gone, the captain and the blonde haired dude, they talk, and that's our final clip. Well, Major, I think we did one hell of a job. You want to take one more look at that gold before my ship comes to pick it up? Uh, captain, your gunboat's been redirected. What? I used my satellite link up to feed different coordinates to their onboard computer. Major Harrison, what the hell are you talking about? Captain, my real name isn't Major Harrison. Bruce Christian, Special Operative CIA. Face it, John, you've been infiltrated. I replaced Major Harrison while he was on his way to your base in San Francisco. As a matter of fact, he should be waking up just about now. So, uh, rather than getting a pissing match with the armed forces, the CIA decided to take over the whole operation. Uh, covert, I believe you call it, Captain? At any rate, we have a small Corvette-class submarine arriving momentarily to do the honors. Uh, You could radio headquarters for verification now that the gold is secure. Maybe I'll retire early. Hey, how are we going to get home? I'm not getting in a submarine. Uh, Catamaran? Captain, you do know how to sail, don't you? Hell no, I'm I'm a desk jockey, intelligence man. Well, let's hope you're intelligent enough to find your way back to Molokai. Let's give it a shot. Let's toast to the warriors of all nations. Cheers. 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 You know, our calculations indicate that there were six gold bars missing when my unit collected the goods. Uh oh. But I convinced them that they were wrong. Hmm. Taryn, are you at it again? You bet I am. <laughs> I'm still a civilian, remember? You mean you know where the six missing gold bars are? According to international maritime law, I'm entitled to them. They were in the ocean when I found them. Besides, do you know how much it's going to cost to repair our plane? Enough about gold bars. How about some (laughs) R&R? Lieutenant Bruce Major, or whatever it is that you call yourself, do you dance? I think so. Uh, Rocky, you do have those little feet painted on the floor, don't you? (laughs) You bet I do. Let's give it a try. Shall we? And what about you, Captain Andreas? Yeah, Captain. What about you? I'll try anything once. Or twice. Mm. (laughs) I guess that leaves us, Shane Abilene. You've kept the home fires burning, and I love loyal men. I'm honored. Well, you play your cards right, you'll be more than honored. I knew that. You knew that? I knew that. Fucking Abilene. 
fuck it, Abilene. And we end with Terran rationalizing thievery. Roll credits. I love how she's like this maritime law expert, even though like the horrendous murder of the individual who was carrying the gold bars, she just like etch sketches that away. She's like, yeah, I performed an act of piracy, but the person that I pirated is now completely in pieces. And the only thing left behind is the gold bars that were technically in the ocean because they were underwater during high tide. And I'm the one who did it. I'm the one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one who killed him. Now I'm going to buy a plane so that the agency doesn't have to pay for it so that we can go back to work for the agency and everybody's going to shut the fuck up about the gold, right? She isn't She isn't going to do that. <laughs> She's not paying for it. She can make the government pay for the plane. She's going to keep all that gold for herself. You fucking know that. Meanwhile, Shane Abilene's like, listen, you really got to stop putting Tara out front as your human shield. And Donna, <laughs> Donna's like, did you hear what she just said about the gold bars? She flat out murdered the guy. He's like, yeah, go go fine. Human shield her. Yeah, it's fi- everything's fine. Jesus Christ. <laughs> My past cousins and all their notes about you two ladies are true. <laughs> <laughs> and then as he leaves the dot, he goes, so, like, how many of my family members have you boned? <laughs> and, she's, and she's like, a lot. Yeah. At this point, she has an Abilene soup in her womb. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, God. Jesus. <laughs> that was gross. I'm leaving that in, though. I don't care. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that was fucking nasty. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now let's uh, let's back it up and actually talk about the plot line yes. of the movie. There we go. Um, yeah. It was really hard to follow the plot of this one. It's not just yes. it's not just you and I. Uh, I watched this twice. Uh, as I said, left, like the first time I watched it, I literally stopped getting into it because there was too many twists and too many you know double crosses. And it, once you get to too many, I'm just like I'm I'm out. See you later. Yeah, I was able to, especially if you don't do it right. Like like the usual suspects did all those twists and everything right. That's a movie that got it right. Yeah, this... you're talking setup and payoff, and there's yeah. there's all this payoff with not really any setup about any of this. It's just we're supposed to accept the fact that the one guy was actually CIA working on behalf of Lethal. Shane knew this all along, and for some reason, the girls just happened to crash land on the island to be able to lend a helping hand. This wasn't something that Shane set them up to do, or if he did, he doesn't want to admit it until at least after he hits Donna. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, right. (laughs) Gets a little bit of her loving. (laughs) Fucking Taryn's oblivious. She's just happy that she just looted, like, another couple of billion dollars worth of fucking gold in some way, shape, or form. She's fine there, you know? She's, She's waiting on those blood diamonds she's getting shipped in. Yeah, right? Because you know she only gets the bloodiest of diamonds. <laughs> exactly. So they, they're going through all of this horse shit, and they're making all yeah. of these weird jumps through the storyline and everything. And then they sideload in this whole like World War II Japanese history thing, which is really interesting and cool. And they could have spent some time examining it and you know, like really had the guy communicating with them and talking about it before he sacrifices his life to save the girls, you know, like he did up against Al Leong or whatever, but it, it's just basically like a rush to the end. It's sort of like American Horror Story and their seasons where they set up all this stuff and they come up with all these great ideas and they have all these wonderful grand sets. And then the last episode is inevitably a rush to tie up all the loose ends that they haven't, they've just left out there. And that's, yeah. that's exactly what this film tried to do. The problem is that it can't quite pull off what American Horror Story does, where 45 minutes of TV settles like 10 episodes worth of shit all at once. And you're like, oh, I guess that works. Yeah, right. Exactly. And that only happened in later seasons because a lot of the earlier stuff I just want to bitch about because I've been watching them again. A lot of the earlier seasons didn't work, but they did it in the last couple really well, like Apocalypse and on. Yeah, we're not. This isn't American Horror Story podcast, okay? (laughs) Little did you know, year six, Cinema PsyOps is switching over to the American Horror Story podcast. Every week we do one episode. (laughs) Okay, well then the night the season in 1985 that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, it was actually quite excellent. I was very happy with all the stuff that they did. I was in that. I was really ha- I have gotten into like a couple of seasons of American Horror Story, and then there are some where I start watching that I've never finished because again they sometimes fell into that trap. But that was just a great. I was really happy. We just I just one night decided to arbitrarily start watching it with my wife, and we we just we kept binging it because it was that good. Yeah, uh, eighty five has been my favorite overall. But anyway, back to the actual right. Savage <laughs> Beach movie here. Um, everything that they set up, everything that they tried to do, the payoff, it narrowly or very widely misses and falls into a deep 
Canyon of what the fuck is going on in this story. Um, this was the third time that I watched it for the show, and it made a little bit more sense. Um, yeah. When I watched it t- t- to cover it here, it made a little bit more sense this time around. Um, the nudity is spaced out far and few between in a lot of the shots, but once the action gets kicking in and there's people killing each other on the island... The pace picks up super fast and it's like an hour into the film once that all gets going and you don't feel any running time really up to that point. You're just kind of confused as to what's going on in the story. If you're just watching this for action and tits, you're going to be more than satisfied. Yeah. And I would say that's also besides the mustache and this woman, not a lot of sex scenes. A lot of nudity, but not a lot of sex scenes. Yeah, we were really spoiled with Picasso Trigger. There was a lot of like passionate lovemaking and stuff kind of melded in there. And Heart Ticket to Hawaii had a lot more like sex and nudity kind of mixed together and stuff. Again, it's it depends upon the type of nudity you prefer to see on screen. And sometimes guys have a problem with seeing naked women and a naked man with them. It makes them feel inadequate. So that, I, I'm fine. Why why did you pause? And I know you're staring at me on that. One. <laughs> what, what are you doing? What are you saying? <laughs> Got a guilty conscience there. What are you doing? Why are you staring at me like that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even looking at you. We don't even have video on this. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but basically what I'm getting at is uh, people that have a problem with watching sex scenes with two beautiful people making love, if yeah. they are feeling inadequate within themselves about how they look and feel and they can't detach that feeling, then they have a problem with watching that sex scene. I've, I've noticed that when someone is insecure uh, in themselves and they're watching a sex scene like that, they get uncomfortable because they're insecure with their own body. It's not necessarily that they are upset about having to see two beautiful people making love on a film. Yeah. yeah. No, you're 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 right. That's exactly true. That's all I was kind of hinting at there. And if you fit the bill on that with your Freudian slit, slot, slot, <laughs> fuck. Slit. Well, oh Jesus. <laughs> then that's you. <laughs> uh anyway, I was still fun uh, watching it a second time and kinda okay. I can finally place who was where, what they're doing, maybe and and their and their reasonings for doing so. I enjoyed the movie more on the second watch. Taryn's revealed to be even more of a psychopath than we ever feared in the last few movies, which makes yeah. me like her even more. Exactly. She's got that like hot because she's psychotic thing that Cheryl from Archer has. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, it's very rare to get turned on by a cartoon, but, uh. <laughs> yeah, Cheryl's like so fucking crazy and self destructive, I have to date her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Taryn's starting to like jump up on that scale with this movie, too. Is, is Taryn starting to get in there? <laughs> yeah. Like, Jesus, you probably would maim me for life. I have to date you. <laughs> Nice and gross. <laughs> <laughs> That's a perfect place to end it. Nice and gross, unless you got anything else yeah. to say. No, I got nothing. All right, we're going to take another break here. We're going to play a little bit more music that fits in with the theme, the music for Savage Beach. We're going to have a promo for the podcast that's getting the next big push I want to give. And when we come back, we'll do some quick PSYOP news. Taste colors beyond any known spectrum as bonic euphoria cascades into your consciousness. Observe the laws of physics no longer applying to an existence that confines. Space and time will unravel and reform to a screaming new dawn, bursting with infinite possibility. It's as easy as listening to the Corrupted Youth Podcast, where the five the son duo of Dan and Brennan explore the latest blockbusters, classic genre films, and the schlockiest of Golden Age VHS rental store flicks in spoiler heavy fashion. Corrupted Youth Podcast is available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and more. Take a break from reality, unlock your infinite cosmic potential, and become a dongle.
is the music I'm picturing playing at Rockies when uh, Shane is trying to do some dancing with Donna and uh, <laughs> that, yeah, that, right. that Christensen CIA guy is trying to dance with Taryn, who is just wondering what his skin would look like if she turned it into a lampshade. <laughs> and the captain's just getting ready to have a three-way. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, the other two ladies, and it's like the happiest he's ever been in his entire life. Yep, yep, he's he's living large right now. <laughs> but it's not as happy as what I'm going to be if you give me some psyop news. Believe it or not, this one comes from my wife. What? She found me an article. Wow. Yeah. Uh, This is from IFLScience.com. New York City just recommended using glory holes in latest pandemic sex advice. Ooh, is that me getting a metal rod shoved up my rectum? I don't know if they do that, but okay. The COVID-19 pandemic has thrown up a lot of problems that governments never expected to have to deal with. OMG, I'm just drinking game. Leaving them to give advice they never thought they have to give. Imagine getting elected based on how much freedom you were going to give everybody, then a few months later telling them remain indoors. If you if you leave, you are breaking the law. Your cum will probably taste better. Okay, now imagine having to take into account how exceptionally horny your population is because they haven't had sex in the last two or three months due to a lockdown measure. I'm taking another dick. Well, that's I mean, a problem. I like because- dick. <laughs> well, that's the problem many countries and cities are now facing. In the UK, the government recently announced its recommendation to create support bubbles where people living alone can meet up and stay overnight at another household. Because it's, it's been super a- hot, you should be able to fuck one time. <laughs> it's been immediately... <laughs> Oh, shit. It's been immediately nicknamed Sex Bubble or Booty Bubble God, online. It see when you do anal. By so, so, social media that's becoming increasingly horny on Maine. Over in Spain, police in Barcelona had to break up an orgy because it uh, it broke their lockdown rules. the most confused direction right now. America is no different. And to help with some problem that New York, uh, to help with some of these problems, New York City has released some new safety guidance on how to make the sex during the COVID nineteen pandemic that appears to include uh, th- that appears to include recommending glory holes among other items. Pulling it just to pull it. NYC Health gave out some advice you'd expect, including having sex over video calls. I think that's going in the spank bank. Uh, even recommending sexy Zoom parties. Hey, bro, I can't get it up. <laughs> Is that what you say during the Zoom party? Yeah, it's my <laughs> fetish to pretend like I'm impotent and then reveal that I'm not. Hot damn. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to judge you. Uh, safe COVID sex advice also includes masturbating, taking care to wash your hands, and any toys afterwards. Or if you have to do it with someone else, do it with someone you live with. Pulling it just to pull it. Oh, he's also advice for Wang. Uh, there's also advice for people who want to have sex outside their own household, which, let's face it, is going to happen. So it's best that the single people and couples living apart have the advice they need. Preaching abstinence never works. Circle sex jerk, is normal circle jerk. Part, sex is a normal part of life, the guide says. During this extended public health emergency, people will and should have sex. Let's jack consider, it or something. Consider, <laughs> I don't know why that... <laughs> <laughs> I make money from my sex work. <laughs> okay, consider using harm reduction strategies to reduce the risk to yourself, your partners, and our community, the guideline states. Everyone will be so the coming guide- on my face. The guidelines, of course, advise that you shouldn't have sex with someone who's displaying symptoms coming or has tested me. positive for COVID-19, as well as stressing that testing positive for antibodies doesn't mean definite immunity. Go jerk the off Department in a of- Petri dish. The Department of Health conceded that we don't yet know if COVID-19 can spread through sex, but we do know it spreads through saliva, mucus, and breath. I wasn't so, going to go shoulder deep for real. So as it's been recommended by other health professionals, it suggests covering your face and avoiding kissing. Why are you coming in public swimming pools? That's a good question. Um, most of them are closed now. Uh, so uh, maybe it's your thing. Maybe it's not. But during COVID-19, wearing a face covering that covers your nose and mouth is a good way to add a layer of protection during sex. The yes, memo you says. can't have sex by sticking an erect penis into a vagina. Heavy breathing and panting can spread the virus further. And if you or your partner have COVID-19 and don't know it, a mask can help sp- stop that spread. Oh, my God. Just there- fucking incest already. 
<laughs> There's even a section. I, I thought that was you lied. <laughs> nice. Put it, in the butt. Just... Put it in the butt. Uh, there's even a section that offers advice on how precisely to have sex. All and this is where things get a little spicy. All blowjobs should be teethy. All blowjobs should be teethy. <laughs> as well as recommending that people avoid transferring saliva, semen, or feces. Avoid rimming. You want uh, to do a little use... ass play? To, you're not supposed to. And to use protection, they also endorse glory holes. God uh, doesn't uh, see when you do anal. You can make it a little kinky, be creative in, with sexual positions and physical barriers, like walls, that allow sexual contact while preventing close face-to-face contact. It always comes and back to dick. So the physical barriers, like walls part, uh, that appears to be NYC recommending glory holes and urging people to get creative with physical positions that could be construed uh, as the Department of Health uh, proving doggy style is a sexual position due to limiting a face-to-face contact. Face sex with a dead thing. So there you go. Uh, NYC is, uh, they say to do doggy and glory holes. We're just and trying that's to prolong save the amount of time that happens before we watch this brother and sister fuck. Yeah, yeah. That's all this is. <laughs> it is. It was all that one. That's what those recommendations basically are summed up to. Yeah, exactly. If you want to watch ass and eat popcorn. <laughs> I just thought it was funny that, uh, you know, strange times, man. We live in some strange times. It's just a really weird recommendation. The CDC actually says all blowjobs should be teethy. That's just weird. I don't th- I don't think they said that. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. So glory holes are kind of a thing that they're trying to do, but it's basically they want to block out the face to face contact and the panting and the breathing and the expelling of breath while you're doing the pumping and the grinding. Yes, exactly. But it's also been shown that uh, the COVID, you know, can also be STD transmitted, but it doesn't take as much shape, but it could still do some damage for sex as well. So you still have to practice safe sex while ever you're doing this glory hole shit on top of that. You, yeah, you still want to use condoms and shit because, yeah, it's important. So it's just bizarre time to try and get any kind of sex. And I'm sure that there's a lot of people out there that have a lot of carpal tunnel being activated and or ordering sex toys online. Uh, I bet it's a big boom. Uh, this is another big boom probably for porn uh, slash sex toys right now. Yeah, I feel really, really bad for all of the single people out there. And also, uh, let's not mince words here. The teenagers who are missing out on opportunities that they would have otherwise had were they to be in school and taken advantage of the hormones that are raging around them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I it, it's a rough life for a teenager out there right now. Yeah, I can only only can, imagine. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being a teenager? You get you get like a a, a significant other, and then you have sex for the first time, and you're like, "Wow, that was great!" And then the lockdown happens, and you can't see your significant other anymore. <laughs> so you got that you got that one time, and I was just sitting there swimming in your head, <laughs> and all you can imagine, and it just becomes even more romantic and amazing. Meanwhile, that significant other is like, "Wow, that was awful. I can't wait to break that- up with them, but I'm going to wait till <laughs> after quarantine." Yeah, I'm going to wait till after COVID. No reason to add extra stress. <laughs> right. I want to like, I want to do it face to face. Maybe I'll try one oh. last time to see if it's as bad as I remember. And the the guy yeah, right? the, the guy in this scenario, I guess we're the guys in this scenario. We're for yeah. you're, you're sitting there after that happens if you're the guy in the scenario and you're you're thinking about how good you thought it was and then you're wondering, <laughs> well maybe I could have somebody else after the quarantine. So maybe I'll try one more time to see if it's as good as I remember and then we'll break up. So like yeah, literally no, everybody's it, waiting on break up sex at this point just to have anything again and you're sitting there you're like doesn't everyone cry the first time because <laughs> i usually do <laughs> wow your jokes are super fucking rapey and weird right now matt well i cry i was talking about me crying <laughs> yeah that sharing of emotion during sex is not something i'm into <laughs> i you're not you're not into sharing any emotion <laughs> during any act <laughs> uh emotion is not something i'm comfortable with feeling thank you yeah <laughs> And as a matter of fact, you're making me uncomfortable talking about emotions, so I'm going to stop the show right here. We're going to play the ending Legion promo ad. We're going to have some of the music that is straight out of the soundtrack. The song Back to Survival from Savage Beach. And when we come back, we will close out this show. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, 
Pick 6 Movies, the podcast by The Cemetery, the podcast on Haunted Hill, the Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shadecast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which Versus the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. to get to that hook for the song back yeah. to survival <laughs> holy shit man that took forever yeah that was way too long that was the longest way too minute long. and 10 seconds of my life waiting for that chorus hook <laughs> well if you'd like to discover some longer wait times you can check out our landing and launching page for cinema psyops which is legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops that's where you're going to be waiting to download all of those 252 prior episodes to this and once yeah once this one is released obviously it will be there as well Yes, of course. You can also join our Facebook group where you can share various stories that you may find that you feel are PSYOP newsworthy. I will pin them to the top, and if Matt so chooses to use them, he will. Most of the time he doesn't because he knows better than you and he thinks you're all a bunch of idiots. Jesus Christ, man. Way to bury me. I don't think that. (laughs) You didn't jump on that fast enough either. You you gotta think to think that. (laughs) I don't think. (laughs) That's very much true. Your mouth is always five (laughs) steps ahead of your brain. I mean, you're you're being kind at that point, but okay, whatever. Yeah, it's usually like 20, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. If you'd like to find Matt on Facebook, he is Matt Psyop, although he's not really there very often. Your best bet is to email him if you want to contact him, although he swears that Messenger works on his phone for Matt Psyop. If you want to book him, Darren, I'm looking at you. Yeah, <laughs> looking at you, all of you. You can also find me on Facebook. I'm much more accessible because I'm all over the social medias, whoring myself out like the dirty, filthy media slut I am. Yes, yes, you are, you dirty, dirty media whore. I am Court Psyops. You can email feedback to Matt, psyopmatt at gmail.com. Let him know that his turn for guest hosting on your show has come up. Yes. You can also wait. What? You can also email feedback to court cinemasyopscourt at gmail dot com. Let him know that no one wants Matt to guest on their show. They see the nightmare that you suffer. Yeah, that might be. I, I would say that's almost more exact, right there. <laughs> <laughs> you can tweet a couple of tweets to a couple of twats on the hate filled shit fest that is Twitter. I am at court underscore psyop, and he is at psyop Matt. Yes, I am. I also am on the gram of Insta as cinema underscore psyops, where I show photos of my kitties being adorable and making it so I can't work during the day from home very easily, (laughs) as well as the tastiest high quality memes of our people that have been shared or just found and then repurposed to be shared for all of you there at cinema underscore psyops. We only have the highest quality of memes. For our people. (laughs) Our people. The people own the memes. The socialist party of memes. (laughs) Cinema underscore psyops. (laughs) Uh, Well, if you're out there being a psychopath like young Terran, kick the fuck out of whoever has that money, take it from them, declare international maritime law, and kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch.
I'm rolling now on my side. All right, hold on. I am now rolling on my side. One, two, three. All right, awesome. All right. Three, two, one. This is Bo from legionpodcasts.com. Since I'm replacing the shit, I leave it to where we can kind of talk over top nuts, of it. We're happy to offer oh, nice. some old So if it's an incorrect clip or you need but to stop me for folks, whatever reason, I'll be able to hear you and vice versa. Really helping these days. Okay. But still remain quiet when you can. <laughs> I'll try, yeah. Furlough with no pay till the worst of this coronavirus threat is passed. I think I just made this like an outtake. That's why we set up a go you know what's not going to contain that Howard Shore sounding Caribbean music? What's that? This trailer. <laughs> this is Savage Beach. Oh shit, I and lied. It does have it. To Hawaii. Undercover <laughs> federal agents. No, we have to acknowledge it. It's something that we got to talk about because that's how this psyop works. We make people watch old movies and then we try to change their mind about the world by talking about them. Yeah. Like, oh shit, know, I gave away the premise of the show. I, I think they know that by now, but don't they? I mean, anybody who can look up the word psyops would probably yeah, right? figure out what the show's all about. Yeah, don't be dumb. <laughs> anyway, I'm trying to persuade, change, and influence your brain. Yeah. yeah, it's a safe place uh, for, 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 for dumb people. No, no, uh, no, you got that backwards. No. Oh, It's a safe for, uh, space for morons. For, oh, yeah, for morons. Or sorry. we're a progressive show for morons. For morons. I'm sorry, my, my jealousy won't allow me to tell you the truth on that. Okay. <laughs> this is what you got to do, Matt. Get into really yeah. great physical shape, uh -huh. become an actor in sexploitation films, and you too uh -huh. could be an Abilene. Close. Except you have a face that doesn't even work for podcasting. I'm, I'm a, I'm fold. I'm a, I'm a Kenny Rogers guy. You know, I know when to hold them, know when to fold them, and I'm fold. I'm out. <laughs> Too rich for my blood, Court. Good job. I lost you at get into good shape, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You lost me at here's what you have to do because it implies I have to do stuff. <laughs> oh, you just want it all thrown at you, literally like an Abilene. Yeah, privilege. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are the worst human being ever. I know. I know. It's just disgusting. <laughs> I feel really bad about who I am as a person. That's good, because um, so do I. I'm regretting letting you be on this show again. Yay! Oh, well, anyway, um, then uh, uh, Taryn uh, takes off, or uh, well, at least takes off. Um, here. The dudes, uh, they meet up. Um, let's see here. Sorry. Just my notes just went crazy there for me for a second. Take your time. Not just an orgasm, but a guilt-free, disease-free, yeah. perfectly safe sex orgasm that you can brag about for years to come. Just come and pussy juice everywhere. So, clip. Jesus. Yeah, that was gross, dude. Oh. You you went too far, my friend. Way too far. I went, I went a little too... I may have gone too far on that one. Dude <laughs> finally gets hard, so now it's time to plow. No, that is... That is... that That's, that's, that's what happens. The lady set up camp, but somebody is watching them. Did you miss the part uh, where they go and take a skinny dip as soon as they find? <laughs> no, yeah, I thought that was. Uh, let's see here. No, no, no. That's coming up later. Okay. We can, we yeah, can. that's not right now because we have we have a few things before that. I wrote that down. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I know for sure you'll talk about is if ladies go skinny dipping. Yeah, right. Give it a rest, Martinez. <laughs> Don't be so rude. What was that two live crew uh, song? Fuck, fuck, Martinez or whatever. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I'm not well versed in uh, two live crews catalog. <laughs> uh, I had one tape that was forbidden because it was supposed to be the filthiest, most disgusting thing on the face of this earth. So because like that, every other kid, I had to have it. Was that like me so horny? Was that that one? Yeah, that's two live crew. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because that's the only one I know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because that was the one I thought was the dirtiest one. Like, no one's supposed to know. So then, as a kid, if adults made a big deal about it, of course I'm going to start looking into it. Right. And because it was supposed to be banned or whatever, everybody yeah. was circulating dupes of that tape. Because somebody got a hold of it, or somebody taped it from somebody, and then the next thing you know, it's circling around, everybody's duping it, and you have like a third or fourth generation tape of it. Exactly. Uh, so then... Uh, Go ahead. All right. I tried to sleep myself once, and I pressed charges. Um, <laughs> wow, that was not a good joke in this time. Not a good... Damn it. <laughs> uh, cut that one. Savage reaction to 
like young Terran, kick the fuck out of whoever has that money, take it from them, declare international maritime law, and kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch. <laughs> no. <laughs> fucking day. Am, Good one. I, I, am I inciting violence again this week? No, yeah. <laughs> Don't incite violence. What's funny is I was talking about, like, beating the fuck out of influencers, and then, like, shortly after we recorded that, influencers were going into blackface, and I'm like, I'm gonna leave that in. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, fucking A. Fuck that. I mean... Holy shit, man. <laughs> what a bunch of fuckheads. Oh, pretty much. Uh, most influencers are. Yeah. Let's just be honest. Finding a way to make everything about them, right? <laughs> pretty much. I mean, yeah. And they're, they're always looking for a way to make money off of a situation. That's it. That's all an influencer does. Oh, wait. Maybe I should it's be an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you, you actually have a soul. Quiet. We're still recording. Don't say such things. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I mean, f- yeah, because you don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we should stop it here. All right, I'm stopping.